Hi, welcome to Wilson Bridge. My name is Brian Drew, Senior Strategist at Wilson Advertising. I'm Devin Meister, Content Director. And today on Wilson Bridge, we're going to be talking about where marketers go to hide. Um, I think this is uh, something that's going to resonate with a lot of people that uh, work in business, but especially marketers themselves, right? Yep. We talked about earlier how a lot of marketers get deeply involved in tech implementations and how, you know, you don't go through their end of year accomplishments and it's just a list of did this tech, did this tech, and implemented this platform and moving on. And um, yeah, I don't think tech's the only place they go to hide there necessarily. Right. So uh, obviously technology is uh, a huge area that marketers go way down into, but uh, another is design. Right. Um, when uh, a, a lot of marketers, uh, when they should be focused on brand positioning, when they should be focusing on personas, uh, development of your go-to-market strategy, uh, the relationship you have with your customers, uh, why your solution, you know, the, the strategic yeah. reasons. Finding the audience, yeah. finding the, creating a market for your product and then finding an audience to bring that market to. What's an area that marketers can, can sort of uh, pivot over to, over to and hide in is design. Like, oh, I don't right. know about that shade of color yeah, or that like font. This color or th this font or mm. can we make the picture a little more pick any sort of random term, just different. I just don't like this guy's face. Yeah, and, and graphic design and design work in general is, is just like technology, by the way, is, is, a, is a paid uh, engagement usually with an outside consultant to uh, you know, professionally help you have better uh, pop in, right. in, your, in, in your look. Um, and uh, it, it, while marketing is deeply supported by design and, and design is very important to brand, that is not the core discipline of a marketer, right? Mm -hmm. But you see in a lot of marketing organizations this sort of over-obsession about the way something looks and feels. And again, I'm not devaluing how important, when I say feels, it's sort of that, mm -hmm. is, uh, the aesthetics and the user experience. I'm not devaluing the importance of that. I'm questioning the credentials of marketers' expertise there. Right, so, so their input should align with their brand position that's those type of things. It shouldn't be into the details of the actual design. And, and when they are involved with design, it should be pretty minimal. It, it shouldn't take, I know you experience weeks and weeks or just days and days of going over the same type of things back back and forth with design when that's not your real job. Yep. Um, so then the third thing, so is it technology, mm -hmm. design, mm -hmm. and then the third is uh, sales, sales right. operations, right? So. Your job as a marketer is to drive campaigns um, because you have a position that you've identified and you have audiences that you've identified and you know how the narrative of your brand and your product or solution speaks to that. You're driving campaigns. You're supporting sales and you're supporting sales operations. Yeah, so you should you be involved are, with sales. But you aren't sales operations. Right. And, and that is too much of a micro involvement in a particular account or, or, or direct customer facing role um, when uh, a marketer should be focused more on campaign execution at a high level, at a macro level. Mm -hmm. So I, I think the three things, des, uh, design and technology and sales operations, those, those are places for marketers to hide when, and they, they line up with what I think marketers core uh, discipline should be uh, when when they're overly involved in de design, when they should be focused on strategic brand position, when they're mm -hmm. overly involved in technology and development of technology that supports them, when they should be more focused on marketing operations, right, right. and how they how they how they execute, and then sales operations when they when they when they should be focused on uh, campaign execution and and they're building pipeline and funnel and waterfall. So yeah, do you think a move towards in-house agencies is going to have any effect on marketers drifting even further away from into these other disciplines or or not? That's one concern. I don't know if the, the Pepsi campaign, the first one they did in-house sort of didn't really turn out right. I've worked on the corporate side and I've worked on the agency side. Same. And and there there's this I think there's this thought that is, is a marketing agency marketers hiring marketers <laughs> to do their jobs? And, and I'm not, I, I would argue that maybe in some cases that's true. Marketers should be um, trained professionals in the discipline around their industry and around their product and their company's culture and their brand's personality. They should know their market's position very well. An agency should bring very specific tailored expertise 
designers, uh, developers, right? People that uh, understand uh, in the weeds certain levels or have, a, or have uh, qualifications to do certain things uh, very technically to support the marketing operations or brand position of a company. So yeah, I, 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 and I think the Pepsi campaign is probably, it looks, we don't know, right. but it, it looks like uh, something that would come out of an in-house conversation. People that aren't uh, really professionally experienced with creating commercials, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, having a fake uh, shoot for a fake Black Lives Matter protest sounds very tone deaf and uh, not not uh, over, over, overly experienced in that, right? I yeah. Mean, there wasn't an outside point of view, sort of like giving yourself a, a haircut where you can't really see the whole picture if you're so deep inside and so internalized. Um, yeah, it just says it, what it's, you know what it's, there's a shallowness to it. What it says is, is as a Pepsi, as a marketer for Pepsi, it's there's a movement happening and I want to be a part of that. So I'm just going to plant myself in that movement. I'm going to yeah. artificially say, I want to be about this. So we're going to go uh, basically create fiction mm -hmm. um, as opposed to a real strategic brand positioning that uh, subtly and gradually and with meaning and purpose aligns your brand with a, with a cause or a purpose that you want to be a part of. Right. The, I, I think the Pepsi one is a great example. Right. Cool. Well, that's all the time we have. And uh, thank you for watching. So be sure to like, subscribe, and comment.